Hello and welcome to another Wine Word Italy review. Today I'm going to be looking at three sparkling wines produced by Cantina Cirotto in the wonderful old town of Asolo in Treviso province. Now, let's think a little about the location. La Cantina Cirotto is uh, surrounded by beautiful countryside, a very historic town, uh, and while it's not on the main important tourist uh, route from uh, say Bologna or from uh, Florence to Venice, it's certainly one of the most popular tourist locations in the province of Treviso. So let's just check where it is on the map. Look at that. If we can get this at all. Treviso is here and uh, there is Monte Bologna and just on the edge of the hills between the plain and the mountains or the foothills is Azolo. So, well worth a visit, uh, particularly in late spring when it's surrounded by fresh green on the vineyards and enjoys seemingly endless views south towards the Apennines across the uh, Panana Plain or north towards the still snow-capped mountains. Um, possibly today would be a, a very good day for this. Now, the Chirotto family have been producing wines here for three generations, founded by Leandro in 1949, who is now the grandfather of the family. Passion and great respect for the local area have always been at the heart of company ideals. I was contacted by Barbara Chirotto, who exemplifies this enthusiasm and passion for tradition and quality. All their vineyards are at uh, 250 to 350 metres above sea level, around Azolo and Montello, where the favourable aspect promotes good quality fruit. From 2009, Prosecco was given a DOCG quality status, currently the highest denomination in Italy, and these three wines here all carry that denomination. So without any further ado, let's talk about each of the wines. So, first up today, I have the Girotto Asolo Prosecco DOCG Vino Frizzante. There's a labelling on the back. I hope we're getting that. Okay, it's in a normal shaped wine bottle, unlike the other two, which have the sort of Prosecco form. All right, let's uh, get this open see what it's about. It's produced from 100% Glera, which is Prosecco grapes, high in the Azolo Hills. Now Glera is the original name of the Prosecco variety of grape, um, and the name comes from the Trieste province, I believe. Uh, it's um, called Prosecco because there's a, a, an area in Trieste province, Prosecco, which uh, the grape takes its name from. This is a good firm fit in here. A little uh, effort involved to get this one out. Okay, so let's think about the grapes. They're selectively hand harvested, as often is the case. They're picked, transported in 15 kilo baskets to avoid damage to the fruit, and fermentation is carried out in stainless steel tanks at controlled temperature. The wine is pressurised for 30 days to add the sparkle. Sugars come in at about 10 grams per litre, and the alcohol level of this is uh, just over 11%, about 11.3 by volume. So let's get some in the glass and uh, see what we've got. And a very, very quick to froth there. We can see the, the bubbles there before the glass begins to steam up. It's a, it's a warm morning and a very cold bottle of Azolot Prosecco. Okay, nice fine bubbles. Certainly persistent. I wouldn't say clouds of bubbles, but uh, enough to make a lively little uh, frizzante, a nice fizzy wine. So uh, let's get the, the nose in and see what we've got. I had a, certainly had a, a nice sensation from the cork. Oh, lovely, fresh green apples. A 
really is pleasant. Coming up in the bubbles there, lovely light, fresh smell. Yep, I mean no more than that, just uh, it's an apple, apple hit altogether there. So, chin chin, let's get the taste going. Now while that's fizzy, that's not an explosion of bubbles on the tongue there, it's um, pleasantly fizzy, not over so. And again, overall sensation, apples, green apples, not too dry. But all together, very fresh, lovely. It's early morning, maybe it's a bit early to be tasting this, but uh, why not? What would we have this for? Well, possibly a, an aperitif, or why not have it with something like uh, macaroni cheese, or uh, a risotto, a vegetable-based risotto, maybe with uh, asparagus and lemon, something like that. I think that would, uh, would make uh, a very, very good matching indeed. So here we are, wine number one. Azolot, DOCG, Prosecco, Vino Frizzante. Okay. From Cirotto. Okay, fresh, appley. Not immensely fizzy, but it's a, just a nice little bit, nice aperitif. Or uh, with something there, a macaroni dish. Or a vegetable based risotto. Good match. There we are. Okay, next up in today's Cantina Chirotto Trilogy is this one here, which is their Azolo Prosecco Superiore Millesimato Brut 2011. There's the information on the back. Okay, nice labelling. The uh, suggestion of Azolo Castle there, or the walls of the town, and uh, the Chirotto symbol on the front. So, let's think a little about this one. Once again, it's 100% uh, Glera, Prosecco wine, originating from those vines high in the Azolo Hills. Lovely image. And if, I, if you've been there, you would see it. It really is a beautiful place. Uh, meet George. She's come to help. There we are. Have a piece of that. Go on. There you are. Down there. That's it, she loves a bit of foil, is our George. Okay, so bunches again, hand selected, and into those 15 kilo baskets before transporting. Vinification is whole bunch, wonderful. Ooh, nothing wrong with that. Um, and uh, softly pressed in stainless steel, fermentation on the skins. Uh, the sparkling process here a bit longer, 45 days, and uh, the wine then ends up with a sugar level of about 9 grams a litre. Um, alcohol coming in there at 11.5, uh, just under 12%. So let's pop some in here, see what's uh, going on in this one. Oh, now that's another thing altogether. Much frothier when we poured there. The bubble's staying a little longer. There we are, it's definitely a... A bigger crowd of bubbles coming up there. Very fine, very persistent this time. That's the extra 15 days under pressure for you. And of course this bubbling, for people that don't know, it's nothing like your carbon dioxide pumped into your soft drinks. It's there because it's fermented under pressure. This is carbon dioxide absorbed from the fermentation process back into the wine. And it only comes out when the pressure is released and we open the bottle. So let's get the nose in and uh, see what it's all about. Oh, right. Well, I was expecting something almost identical, but no, we've got... I've got pears this time. Certainly apple is there, but it's not those uh, crisp green ones, it's a, a general apple smell, but pears is the first hit. Even possibly another fruit in the background there, what have we got? Oh, making my mouth water. Yellow plums. The first yellow plums, the nice hard ones. A bit sharp, but uh, still a real fruity scent. Oh, that's marvellous. Well, well, well. 
Okay, let's have a taste. Chin chin. Oh my goodness. Is liquid pears with a big fizz. Now that time there was a, a, a fresh air explosion, a, a lot of bubbles coming out on the tongue. A very, very clean taste. And absolutely pears and uh, maybe a bit of apple, but uh, it's wonderful. Oh, I could drink a lot of this, a bit early in the day, but I could. And again, you'd have this as a celebratory drink, why not? You know, the, the form of the bottle says. Party, doesn't it? Celebration. But if you're going to be a little more civilised about it, what would you have? Maybe uh, a yellow and red pepper omelette. Why not? Something like that. That would match this quite nicely. Or if you're having it as an aperitivo, some parmesan cheese straws. That would be my recommendation for this one. Um, very good. I'm, uh, <laughs> have a good morning. I'm certainly having one. Chin chin. Now then, wine number three, last and hopefully not least of the three sparkling wines from Chirotto is their Azolo Prosecco Superiore Millesimato Extra Dry 2011. Similar packaging, same style bottle, this time we've got a sort of gold overlay rather than the silver of the Brut version. Incidentally, if you're not a sparkling wine fan, don't despair. Girotto also produce a still white and a range of reds. So uh, don't think, oh, Girotto's not for me, I'm not a sparkling wine fan. Get onto their site, www.girotto. Oh, let me just check, put it here. Yes, okay. www.girottovini.com and have a look at their range, have a look at the, uh, the site there, and uh, make a choice. So let's get this one open. Here it is, wine number three. What have we got? There's a tab. There it is. The cat will no doubt be back. The moment I start opening this, she cannot resist the rustle of paper or foil. Here she comes. <laughs> Come on then. There we are. I'll put that over there. And she might be distracted from jumping on the table. All right. So once again, 100% Glera Prosecco-based wine from the vineyards, in the hills. Oh, that's a good pop. That one's okay. So same methods as the brute version. The difference is the final sugar content, which is in this case 16 grams per litre, resulting in a lower dryness. Alcohol still the same at about 12 percent. So uh, let's see what we're getting in the glass. Once again, marvellous frothy bubbles. Again it's subjected to 45 days under pressure. So we're uh, getting a good amount of fizz in there. Let that settle a little bit and then we'll have a look at the, the bubbles. You can probably see them immediately actually. It's a slightly more golden colour, but still a very pale, pale straw, oh, pale greenish yellow. This one is a slightly different colour. Okay. Plenty, plenty bubbles there. It's uh, persistent, coming from all areas of the glass. So there we go. Alright, let's get the nose in and see what it's about. Oh! Fruits are galore. We've got Granny Smith apples or early hard pears. You know, when you take that bite of the first pear off the tree, it's not quite ready, but it's still, it gives a good crunch. Nice sharpness to it. Wonderful. I think there's more depth to it, but maybe that'll come out in the taste. Chin chin, let's see what we've got. Wow. Yes, there's apple, but I've got I've got a kind of melony sensation going on there too. 
green flesh melon. Some leafy herbs almost. It's kind of verging towards the minty. That's amazing. Yes, yeah, certainly a leaf herb in there. It could be mint, I'm not quite sure. But overall, that's very clean. Quite crisp. But uh, just a tiny, tiny tad sh um, sweeter than this one here, than the Brute. But again, a marvellous celebratory drink. If that's what you want to do with it, why not? Or let's think about what we can eat with this. with a mild cheese, ricotta perhaps, ricotta tortellini, that would be good. Or uh, again, thinking about a risotto, a mixed vegetable, maybe spring vegetables, something like that, early season vegetables, um, you know, petit pois, uh, certainly, fantastic. I'm pleased. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed this as much as I have. The uh, three sparkling wines from Chirotto in Azolo. Ah. So, once again, that last one there, the Prosecco Superiore Extra Dry Millesimo, millesimo 2011. Before that, we went up a step, slightly drier, the Brute Millesimo 2011, once again. Chirotto Azolo Prosecco Superiore DOCG. And our first wine, slightly simpler in the taste and simpler in the presentation as well, but nevertheless, well worth a taste. And the Azolo Prosecco DOCG. That's all from me, so I'll see you soon, I hope, on another Wine Word Italy review. Don't forget, in the very near future, we've got uh, Cantina Aperte. So, uh, till the next time, chin chin.